This is the Harmonic Motion Podcast, a place where you, dear listener, can join with automotive aftermarket professionals as they delve into and discuss the matters which matter. Welcome, dear listener, to our very special episode of the Harmonic Motion Podcast. We can scarcely believe it. It's been a year since we revved up the engines and dropped our clutch and launched our incredible journey with you, dear listener, and our amazing guests into the heart of the automotive aftermarket. And we're happy to say it's been some ride so far. Today, we're not simply marking a milestone or celebrating our podcast anniversary, but we're celebrating you, our amazing audience, and our awesome guests who've joined us together on this podcasting audio-visual road trip. When we put the plan together for this, the Harmonic Motion podcast, our intention was to run for six episodes and see what the feedback was like. It was largely a voyage into the unknown, but our discussions with the people before we set off, their feedback gave us a good idea that there might just be something in it. Like most things in business, there was a risk of getting going. Uh, The planning and production time, the equipment, the studio, the cost of editing, hosting of various platforms um, to make it happen was all at our own risk. And really what we were doing is probably wasting our time, but more to the point, we could have been wasting your time. Um, And that's obviously a bit too precious. So the pressure was on for us to make it work and to deliver what you wanted. Now, I'm delighted to say that 20 episodes in, having achieved around 11,000 downloads and continually receiving positive feedback, uh, we can confirm that we've received the metaphorical thumbs up from you, dear listener, for what we're doing. And for that, we are truly thankful and grateful. And to that end, we've decided to produce a couple of special episodes uh, where we'll analyze some of our key interviews. We'll talk some behind the scenes stuff and also kick around the learnings and the key points that we've uncovered along the way. The name. Uh, One question that pops up regularly is the name. Harmonic motion is a term used in physics and it describes a special type of periodic motion uh, that an object experiences due to a restoring force which acts towards the equilibrium position. Now, not really a snappy description, but with my engineering background, uh, the name seemed to make perfect sense for what we're trying to achieve. Uh, The name was a metaphor for the type of discussions we're aiming at having on the podcast. Uh, Discussion, uh, the discussion harmonics would go back and forth easily between a fixed point, me, the host, and the object, the guests, perpetually and without friction, and hopefully at a natural frequency. I wanted there to be a style, a sort of drive or a certain chi to the podcast, which was natural and free flowing. Uh, Next up was the objective, and the objective for every episode was to share our guests' journey into the automotive aftermarket. I was hopeful that the stories would be inspiring, as hearing about someone's journey, especially if they overcome challenges or achieve significant goals, can inspire others to pursue their own dreams and aspirations. These stories provide a sense of possibility and also encouragement. I hope the stories would be educational. We can learn valuable lessons from the experience of others, whether it's learning from their faux pas, gaining insights into the different paths or routes that they've taken, um, or through discovering new perspectives. The sharing of a journey tends to be highly educational without the formality of feeling that you're getting or being educated. Um, Next, I was mindful that sharing of stories can lead to empathy and amazingly strong connections, even through the impersonal um, medium of the internet. Our guests sharing their personal stories definitely fostered empathy and understanding. Uh, The conversations allowed us all to connect on a deeper level by realizing that we're not alone in our experiences and emotions. Uh, Another person uh, has been where you've been now and not only survived, but most likely thrived. Um, They can be really useful in shifting our own perspective from being situational or problem centric towards solution or changed focus. And that is the power of stories. When we hear about somebody else's journey, this can often motivate us to take action for ourselves. It can help us into making positive changes in our own lives or to persevere through to tough times. Simply knowing that others have faced similar challenges and have achieved their goals provides a powerful source of motivation for that we can do that as well. Promoting what is awesome about the automotive aftermarket community was high up on my list of hopes for the Harmonic Motion podcast. Having deep working relationship with cars, the industries and the characters within for around 40 years, I felt there were some amazing people who've made some awesome journeys in our industries and these should be shared. I wanted to create a space where people come together to support and uplift one another and to foster a sense of community, camaraderie and mutual encouragement, promoting all that is great in our industry. 
the team. The Harmonic Motion podcast is devised, scripted, planned and produced and distributed entirely by a massive team of two people. Um, we currently manage the HMP 100% in-house. Uh, Olivia, my daughter, joined the business initially to help out in the office. She then worked through an apprenticeship in digital marketing, partly through the pandemic, before taking time out once the dust had settled from the unmentionable event um, to travel the world. Well, well, I say travel the world. It's probably part one of her world traveling anyway. Uh, she now expertly takes care of the post-production, promotion, editing, marketing, and distribution. She is a hugely talented individual who can turn her hand to pretty much anything, and we are truly blessed to have Olivia on the team. The future. Uh, yesterday is history and tomorrow is mystery, as the old saying goes, but what is the future of the podcast? Uh, we're aiming for more of the same and some different things too. Uh, our objectives for the show that we set before we began were also determined to avoid what's known as pod fade. And pod fade is a phenomenon where a show just stops suddenly and out of the blue. And really our objective when we set up was to be in it for a period of time. Um, Initially, that was going to be one series of six episodes, but we've far since outstretched that based primarily on the feedback that we've had that we're doing an all right sort of job. Um, recent statistics show that three out of every four podcasts fade between episode seven, uh, before episode seven, sorry, and 90% of podcasts quit before reaching 20 episodes. We're happy, therefore, to have navigated HMS Harmonic Motion Podcast through the sea of broadcast media, uh, the rough sea, and past these doom-filled rocky outcrops of pod phased. And all I can say is onwards. Uh, now, having self-invested to get the show where it is thus far, um, and I've done that predominantly for my own resources, we're excited to be embarking upon some early stage discussions with kindred automotive aut businesses uh, regarding podcast and episode sponsorship. It's one of the ways that we can keep going, resource it adequately and ensure that we're in it for the long term. So yeah, we're actively seeking to develop mutually beneficial commercial relationships to ensure we can continue the good work. Now we see this as a pretty positive step. Um, it ensures long-term sustainability of the Harmonic Motion podcast. The podcast should really be able to take care of its own cost base. And in the podcast industry, sponsorship is widely accepted as the standard to achieving and maintaining the quality. So. If sponsorship is something that you'd like to explore, please get in touch and we'd love to discuss how we might be able to work together. Uh, next up, we're going to discuss some gold some uh, of, from the episodes that we've done from the Harmonic Motion podcast, uh, covering the matters that matter with the people, um, that the guests that kindly appeared on the episode. So we are going to do a quick episode review and, um, yeah, pick on the points that mattered. Our first episode review starts with Alex Lindley from Garage Hive. Um, and this was a great episode. Um, Alex is an award-winning business owner. Um, we spoke about Lindley's and Garage Hive, two really great businesses that Alex is deeply involved with. To the casual observer, success sometimes look easy, um, but winning awards with great businesses doesn't just happen. Uh, the iceberg effect is often related to business ownership as 90% of the hard work goes on unseen below the surface and people just sort of see the 10% that's popping above the waterline. Um, Alex and I discussed the early years at Garage Hive when Alex did much of the sales, marketing, product development in addition to his other work. And this meant working long hours, sometimes seven days a week, often miles away from home and family, fulfilling a multitude of roles, building his vision for the future of his business. This determination, dedication, belief and hard work is common to successful people and in successful businesses. We touched on just how much effort can be required to get new business moving and perhaps why the move between employment and self-employment is such a large leap. It's a leap which can be made successfully and better made if one's eyes are open to the nature of this new challenge and the required dedication to make this new pace of work life work. Uh, a novice new business owner may have to go from the comfort of a regular hours, contract, sick pay, paid holidays, employment rights, and quite a structured work routine to the frenetic nature of self-employed business owner who is open all hours, maybe working 70 or 80 hour work weeks, performing a multitude of roles and dealing with the unknowns and the unplanned tactical shifts of doing business. We use the word gumption to help describe what's needed. And although it doesn't really satisfy the full extent of what's needed, it does define the get up and go forward center of gravity can do drive that's required to be successful in achieving. 
Alex commented that it was critical to try and ensure some kind of work-life balance to preserve and maintain family relationships. He also pointed to working harder than the competition can help you outperform them, and that success calls for compromise between work and life balance. It is completely necessary to succeed. Having a partner in business, someone who also buys into the startup builder work ethic is massively supportive. Alex and Ray, his business partner, both put in huge shifts in the early days. Their can-do, highly responsive product development cycle helps set the tone and is something that Garage Hive product has become well known for, advantageously so. And it's the product and service differentiator for them in the garage management systems market. It's hugely important for startups and new businesses to recognize the benefit of having a proper plan at the outset, but also to realize that plans are powered by hard work to succeed. We would advise anyone and everyone considering starting up their own business to first seek training in business. Understanding how to manage a business is critical to success, and having management tools and systems to help you manage that business is also a must. We must also never forget that being a, a great at doing the service and maintenance of motor vehicles, for instance, is vastly different uh, than being good at managing a business that services and maintains motor vehicles. People often kid themselves in a business that they can learn the management aspects on the job once they get going, but that just isn't so. The business, once started, will create its own gravity, and this will pull the owners into a different orbit. Um, the business will start to run the novice owner, and they will unfortunately simply lurch from crisis to crisis, probably barely managing to keep it together, as this is likely to become a sort of dynamic and reactive situation. Much better to plan uh, and to get the resources right for your startup so you can manage it from day one rather than having to fight it from day two. Remember the difference between having a business and having a job where you employ yourself is quite simple. If the business needs you to be there for it to function, and for instance, you're the sole uh, productive employee, then you have a job and you're self-employed. If the business works when you're not there, for instance, if you could take a month's holiday and keep it generating cash and not generating problems, then you have a systemized business. Uh, from an exit perspective, systemized businesses that don't rely on key person have a value, whereas self-employed jobs do not. So I'd like to drop into the episode from Alex now. I'm going to play that for you and listen to the sage words of advice that Alex has on running his business. You, you know, taking that role on, it's become a new business and you are all things to all men. You're doing the support and the sales and the installation Yeah, uh, where you've got to always get to the point, haven't you, in terms of you end up doing two full-time jobs or one, one and three quarters before you can employ the next person to take on some of that burden. And then there's two and three quarter jobs between two of you and then four jobs between three and that's gross. Yeah. Yeah, that it's it, it, it's amazing. Um, I think uh, when people come, I, I, I often think people that in an, in a normal job can never fathom how self employed people are driven to to work sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety hours a week to make it a success. Um, and, and actually, what gumption it takes and what dedication is is involved in achieving your goals and ambitions. Um, and yeah, it's easy for people to look at the end when you get to a point of of sort of semi success to go it must be easy dot 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 for you because you're self-employed and you've painted a really really strong picture there of actually um yeah it's never easy but it is worth it and ded dedication to the cause to to achieve your goals will you know deliver huge benefits and that's a it's an amazing story to get you to that that point so far and i, I think it's worth it's worth going a bit more at that as well as if, if you are starting up on your own um you know time the, there's a lot to be said about work-life balance and it is really important and it's definitely a focus for me now is making sure that I, you know, I have some sort of work-life balance because it has been absolutely terrible. But when you're starting out um, and you have competition, the only thing that you have is time. And if you work double the amount of time that they're working, then it's very clearly a benefit. And the, the, it was seven days. It was quite literally seven days a week for a year. And same for Ray as well. He was it, it was it was a very common um site that we i would do an install there'd be a problem and ray would work through the night to fix the problem and then we come in the next day and the problem's fixed that was just common that was just routine and it be, it became this sort of like thing for garage hive was we were so quick at developing and it was it was all thanks to you know ray really putting in the graft 
and anybody starting out alone, or um, I know we're going to get onto the conversation of, of starting up a business, but if it, I, I do think that whilst work-life balance is important, there, there are sacrifices to be made and putting that extra time in is just completely necessary. In our next mini episode review is uh, our guest, Andy Sava. And for those that don't know Andy Sava, and, and how would you not know Andy Sava? But if you didn't, he is a former award-winning garage owner who was turned in later life to become a business consultant and trainer. The self-styled garage inspector's courses are well known for being passionately delivered and down to earth. Andy brings his wealth of experience and insight from the sharp end of running garages into his um, range of garage management training subject matter. Andy spends his days now traveling the UK and Ireland, delivering his training to up and coming garage owners. His aim is to ensure that these garage folk are set up with the skills and the knowledge to avoid making costly mistakes and to prosper from running their own garage businesses in line with Andy's advice to industry standard specifications and practices. During the full episode, Andy and I got into the detail behind his rise from the shop floor to the boardroom. In common with other industry high achievers, Andy showed real grit and determination in his ownership journey, which culminated in Andy establishing and building the super brand specialist garage called Brunswick Garage, which was based out of Andy's hometown in London. The discussion turned to how very differently being good at fixing cars was from being good at running a business in fixing cars and how the training for the techs, their wives and girlfriends turning from tech into garage owners was often overlooked. It seemed often that the journey from being an hourly rate paid employee to being self-employed business owner was considered relatively simple. After all, anyone can just open up a garage. It seemed that the gulf between what people are being paid on an hourly rate as an employee for fixing cars versus the self-employed charge out hourly rate for fixing cars could be misled by the novice a business owner into thinking that turning a profit was easy. Many discover often later in their journey and sometimes too late that that just isn't so. We've selected a clip from our discussion with Andy, which centered on the financial management of garage businesses. And having a grip on this is a key element into making a profit. And there are many factors to get setting up the business to be profitable from the get-go. I asked Andy about the key performance indicators, also known as KPIs, required for running a garage business. And if there were one KPI trying to drive into the detail of where we should start, I asked Andy which it would be. He confirmed that one of the biggest uh, and best KPIs would be knowing your cost of doing business, as without knowing this, all other critical calculations, such as setting your labor rates, productive efficiency, markup on parts, was all pretty much for the birds. If the cost of doing business was an unknown or was way off the mark, everything else is pretty much guesswork, and turning a profit would be in the hands of the fickle finger of fate. Unfortunately, too many novice garage owners, um, the cost of doing business is an unknown, and it's an unknown unknown. They maybe don't even know they need to do that. They're completely unaware of just how mission critical knowing an up-to-date cost of doing business is. We discussed um, about learning on the job, so setting up the business and then trying to learn how to run it. And we described the business as being an entity which generates its own gravity. Once it's up and running, particularly in the hypercritical early stages, business owners are kind of dragged along by the business gravity and proactive management of change is really quite difficult. Many find for the first few critical years, they're almost exclusively reacting and reactively managing their business affairs. Many work extra long hours to get the work done without really realizing if there's a profit in it or not. They are sometimes so under the cosh that they are unable to stop for weekends off or to go on holiday. So making critical but subtle changes to their business model to ensure profitability is off the agenda. They simply don't have time to think or to plan or to implement. We painted the classic picture of the business owner meeting their accountant at the year end review. The accountant would tell the business owner that there's great news because the business turned a small profit. The garage owner's very next question is, well, where is it? And that happens so often in business ownership. In addition, our discussion with Andy recognized the needs for business training for all, and this training delivers huge benefits as the business starts on a good footing and then grows profitably. So training before you get going is important. 
setting profit aspirations, planning to resource and build a solid business, planning and recruiting a top team, pricing and winning work, scheduling the work and completing it effectively and efficiently. All of these contribute to building a profitable business. We are always mindful that a business has several stages. All the while it grows, it should provide a great living to you and your team. It should be a rewarding experience from a personal development standpoint. And the ultimate aim may be to replicate the business model. I build more branches or to exit, cash out, and then move on to your next great adventure. Whether or not you're able to move a business from adolescence, where it won't run if you're not there, to a more mature business, which runs without you, is kind of all down to proper planning and great management. So I'm now delighted to be able to play a snippet from uh, Andy's episode, which contains some gold about um, understanding the cost of doing business. Metric, you said, you know what, if you're going to start somewhere, what would be the thing to measure? I would measure, I would try and measure what yeah. it's costing me to be there that's, per hour. That's the fundamental. Simple. That is the fundamental because the only thing, that's how we sell our time, James. That's how we sell our commodity. You know, it's labor, skill, knowledge, whatever you want to call it. That's how we. So the fundamental thing is what's it costing me to be and, here? And do you think that's something that their accountant, as their service provider, if the garage man said, phoned up the accountant and said, can you do me a favor by Friday? Can you get me my cost of doing business? Is that something in the gift of most standard accountants? I would hate to say no. It should be a yes. But then again, it, it's whether they understand the metrics of how our, how our sales are generated by. So if they put parts and labor together to try and work out the metrics, they're not gonna get the right metrics. They're not gonna get the right answer. And this is where, this is the argument I have. You know, you need to learn yourself the correct way so that you can help your accountant to help you, if you know what I mean. You've got to sort of give them the answer. You, you've got to sort of give them the answer first before they can actually help you. Because they won't know how to work out the productivity in the workshop or the efficiency of the workshop. And all the, and that has a profound impact on the cost of, of, of what it's costing you because it depends how much you're selling. The more you sell, the less the cost yeah. is. Yeah. The less you sell, the higher the it's cost. One of those um one of those again, almost businessman running through the jungle, shot by an elephant gun, stunned with the amazing fact that the, the labor that you buy from a technician yeah. has no storage value and it runs out the minute you didn't use it. And so there's no way of reclaiming, you know, those lost hours. It's one of those, it doesn't store, it can't be transported, you can't move it. If you don't use it when you buy it, it, it evaporates, doesn't it? And that's where your efficiencies start to shrink and, um, re you know, reduce your profitability. And so next up was my longtime friend, David Massey. And in this episode, David shares elements of his own particular journey within the industry, which saw him initially working with his parents, the globally recognized automotive super team uh, of Frank and Jean. David has since gone on to take the ADS business to new levels of success, growing from a single site diagnostic specialist and training business into a multi-site garage operation with his flagship workshop being a Volkswagen Group specialist repairer. The main ADS site in Preston has been developed into a real alternative to the dealer, spotlessly clean, equipped with the best and very latest equipment and staffed by highly trained brand specialists and a customer focused team. The ADS branded site attracts discerning Volkswagen Group vehicle owners from far and wide, many of whom will pass dealers and other independent garages on their journey towards ADS. This is true testament indeed to the cult-like following that offers the highest level of service and support can inspire in your clients. Creating raving fans uh, for what you do is, is very critical. This phenomenon is backed, in David's case, by several hundred customer five-star Google reviews and an Instagram and Facebook following of almost 9,000 people. As the saying goes, if Carlsberg did garage brands. David and I spoke about how garages could improve and drive their own business profitability in an upward trajectory. In planning to develop his own workshop offer, David sought to attract and deal with the right sort of customer with the right sort of car. These invested owners have the right kind of mindset to service, maintain and repair their pride and joys to the highest possible standards. Selecting the VW Group brand to focus upon ensured that the team at ADS could provide the benefit of a deep product knowledge to their A-type clients. 
Syncing with the VW Group brand was a natural step for David as he developed an affinity with the brand during his youth. And in fact, it's a trend that continues with David today. In the clip, David shares his wisdom regarding local competition. Whilst it's important to be aware of them, it's probably more important not to be distracted by what they're doing. As a garage, we should focus on doing our own thing and do it well, in fact, ace it, and then the competition will take care of itself naturally by your own super stellar performance of taking care of your own clients. You will outperform the competition by just being brilliant. David also cited the criticality of proper business training. Investing in training to be better, a better owner and manager to run a slick business operation will pay huge dividends, not only in improving business operations and the obvious benefits that enhanced profitability bring, but also in reducing the stress of managing the monster. A poorly organized business can take over your life, impacting on your free time, your family time, and on your health and well-being. David says that we're living in a golden era where access to information from YouTube, the internet, blog posts, and other internet-enabled sources means that access to top quality, free, and paid-for business management content is no longer an excuse. We share the sentiment, of course, and are doing our own little bit with the Harmonic Motion podcast. Transitioning from a technician to a business owner is not simply a journey, and it will be made much more um, simple with the aid of relevant training. I pose the thought that if your business training hours don't exceed the hours you spend training as a technician, you may still be predominantly a technician managing a business rather than a business owner managing a business. The skill and art of successful business are quite nuanced. I also deeply believe that the home, uh, that growing pains and management aggravation business owners could save themselves by training to manage rather than managing without training is immense. The positive impact of the reduced stress, reduced business failures, improved interpersonal relationships, enhanced family relationships is all made possible with the training before you need it. Learning to swim well before you're cut adrift in the wild sea of business operations should be in your plan. Uh, David set out with a master plan to build a brilliant brand and a great business. This wasn't achieved without growing pains and just in time learning along the way for David. He ended up growing the business so fast that the business inertia became difficult to manage. This consequently put him under significant pressure. David feels that the twists and turns in the road to success would have been made much easier with relevant training, systems and support at an earlier stage. His sage words of advice are to develop a management and leader skill, leadership skills before you build the beast. Now we're going to fade over to David's episode and hear the words from the man himself. Important more than ever to, to pay attention and get yourself booked on some of these courses. I, I've, been, I've, been on, I've been on them. Me too. Me too. I, I you know, truly believe that if you're, if, you know, you're transitioned personally from technician to business owner, you have to say, you know, in, in, in my way of thinking about it, crazy as it is, if you if you haven't had the same amount of business training that you had technical training, are you a weaker businessman than you are a technician? Because the skills and arts of running a business are quite nuanced, and there's 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 a lot of facets like there is to being technical, um, and it's one of those things I I you know often look at new starts and fresh starts going into business, you know what you could save the pain and aggravation and distress and uh, angst by having training up front to prepare yourself for opening up a business versus opening up a business and then being dragged along by it as you're trying to work it out how it works as you go along. Um, you know, it, 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 <laughs> I, I, I can resonate with that, mate, on new percent. I have been dragged for many, like I said, it, it, you, just because you're a, you're a decent tech or you're a good tech or, you know, you're good at fixing cars and figuring out diagnostic problems does not mean you're a good businessman. I can testify for that. I am not a good businessman. I have, I have had my... Uh, I've made so many mistakes and I continue to make mistakes and I continue to learn and evolve and get better. Uh, and it, it's funny because uh, <laughs> when I grew the business so rapidly, so quickly, everyone thinks, oh, this guy's a genius. Well, no, I just had a, I just had an absolute wicked plan. I knew how to get there. Didn't mean I was any good at it. And I had no idea what I was doing when I got there. <laughs> and I got to this, this zenith of like, oh, look at me. I'm turning over half a million pounds. I'm the guru. Uh, no, I fell apart completely because the pressure, I didn't have a plan. I didn't have a plan. It wasn't structured. It wasn't, I grew so fast, I couldn't cope. And I just thought, right, okay, employ more tech or do this and do that. And with that come more pressure. And I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, so I, I can't emphasize enough, get help get training just because you're a good tech just because you're a fantastic guy whatever you do running a business the skills in in running a business the skills in leadership are far different than we are fixing cars yes. don't underestimate it 
So that's it for the part one of our anniversary episodes. We hope you've enjoyed what we put together in reflecting some of the things that we've picked up along the way. Remember, you can join our Facebook group, the Harmonic Motion Podcast, and we're always keen for your guest suggestions in this group and discussions on topic subject matter. Tell us what you want and we'll do our best to make it happen. You can reach out to the team here via the Facebook group or on the email address hello at techtopics.co.uk. As always, thanks for listening. Stay awesome. And until next time, it's all the best. Mm -hmm.